Woo! I was editing this podcast and I realized I never actually gave you guys a proper introduction as to who I am. So anyway, hello, uh, my name is Renny. Thank you so much for clicking on the video. I am a private football coach, um, a content creator on Instagram and TikTok, and the podcast host to the Pro Diaries podcast. Listen, if I could describe myself in this past couple of months, I am purely just someone who is figuring it out. Literally just delving into any idea that I have and just figuring it out along the way because I think the best way to learn is just to start. You know, there's a couple of hiccups along the way with the podcast, um, with the audio and the visual, but I have a great team working with me. And today's episode is going to be with Adam Sariman. He is a football scout and we are going to be talking all things football today, especially football in Malaysia. You know, players going overseas regarding how can we improve football in Malaysia, what problems do we have here and what things do we like. So if you're a player, manager, anyone involved in the industry of football, I think you're going to enjoy this one. Before we go into the episode, if you could just support me by clicking the like button, clicking the subscribe button and sharing it to anyone who you think might find interest in these episodes, please do because it helps me more than you can ever imagine. Thank you and enjoy. Yeah, talk to me. I can just say that I was really close in uh, exporting our biggest talent abroad. Lah. Why, why they are not looked on is because that um, we have no marketable value in our league. In Malaysia, uh, I think like league, Super League clubs, they need to have their own academy. Because I saw that, that the pathway for our talents who had potential, there was nowhere for them to go. In the most... <laughs> I, I think this sums up the generation like like fully our first time meeting. Yeah. Straight away jump to a podcast, bro. Yeah, right? bro. <laughs> a long time for joining. Nah, bro. thanks for inviting me, man. Listen, um, here's one thing that like caught my attention, mm-hmm. right? I've never well openly seen or talked to someone who identifies as a scout, right? So let's start off here for the for the people watching as well as uh-huh. for me. Because I'm really not sure either. What do you do? Okay, so what do I do? Well, the thing is, Rani, yeah, it's a good question because I do a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> I do a lot of things. So uh, for the viewers who, who don't know me, uh, my name is uh, Adam Sariman. And um, currently, I am the head of youth development for uh, Kerti Football Club, yeah. which is a, a local club that plays in the fifth league of Malaysia in Terengganu. Okay. And currently, right now, I am also scouting uh, for a team which is in, in Spain, in, in La Liga 2, and also a team in England, uh, in, in Tier 6 of the English football. Yeah. So, um, so three teams, so you got Kerte, you got yeah. your Spanish Division yeah. 2, and then... Six yeah, Kerte, Kerte is more of a, of a proper job that I say, that hands-on, that it doesn't revolve around scouting, it's okay. where I monitor the, the development of, of uh, youth players in the, uh, in the club, in the academy that we have so yeah it's more focusing on youth rather than uh, players who are already at a tender age that where they can play okay like for example in in for a spanish club yeah we 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 find professional players but in in Kerti, it's about producing players to be at an elite level yeah okay so there's there's two two sides to it then so mm-hmm. that's your development mm-hmm. and then your other project is then scouting yeah right let's start on scouting okay first. so how does how did you get about going in this industry of of becoming a scout basically how did i become a scout yeah it's, it's a, the funny thing is is um because we are we are all still young yeah obviously we played career mode we <laughs> played football manager yeah. so basically i started off as a football manager fan basically okay. just play uh, the game extensive amounts of hours i don't know how many hours <laughs> what, what, th- what teams do you usually, uh, have usually i'm more of a person that loves to play you know like starting from from the bottom and then move to okay. winning the champions league so okay. usually uh, i choose uh, a club I, i'll randomly pick a club you know okay. and help them rebuild uh-huh. so basically what i enjoy doing is also finding players from around the world yeah that has talents that has potential to be special yeah. uh, the 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 lionel messi or the ronaldo's that uh, you are looking for and I enjoy doing that so I got I was enjoyed um, to to be in that role and then somehow I, I got acquainted to a friend of mine on Twitter okay because I started writing articles you know yeah started writing articles and then um, I saw his his development starting from a normal scout 
until he became a, a scout for Stoke for Stoke City. Wow. So and, and then, this like you know you know him. Yeah, I know him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he like he 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 told me a lot about the world of scouting and I was like, "Oh, this is actually interesting." You know, there's actually a paid job that uh, other than being a footballer or a coach, yeah. you have that um So, and then he he told me like I had a good opportunity because at that time the English FA was mm. Offering uh, the the level one certification for free. Okay. So I thought, okay, why not? Let's try. Might as well. Yeah, because it's free. Yeah. And yeah, to be honest, it was an introduction, introductory courses. Obviously, it's free. Online. Online, yeah, online. Yeah. Every, everyone can do it. You know, it, it's yeah. Um, yeah. Just I think I'll, I'll send the link to Rani, and Rani can put it uh, probably put it up in in his YouTube channel. Are you an ambassador? Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no just helping. You know, if, if okay, people want to be. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> and um, after that, I I just I just saw that. It looks really good. Like I really, it really, you know, when you find something that is stuck with your core values, you feel like, damn, this is it. I like doing this. And then after uh, getting the certification from uh, the English FA, which is, uh, I think that was that was huge for me at that time. And then uh, there was a paid courses that you need to go, uh, which is the Professional Footballers Scouting Association PFSA, yeah. which is uh, the certification for scouts. You need to have that. So I did my level one and then my level two. And these are like recognized worldwide. Yeah, recognized worldwide. And uh, and I, only after that Malaysia took off regarding this uh, scouting. Yeah, and they just recently like recently yeah, came out of yeah. course. Yeah, and and they did that as well. So after the, after I completed all those courses, um, I I created a LinkedIn account, you know, because okay. uh, my friend the 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 Stoke scout told me like. Scouting is basically networking, like you network with a lot of scouts from all over the world. So, uh, what better way a platform, a professional platform, is LinkedIn. So, after LinkedIn, that's when I receive a lot of offers. You know, like people were looking for voluntary scouts. Yeah. So, um, I did mine for a local club in England, um, which is near the place where I grew up. Which is I grew up in Coventry, mm. Coventry in, in England. So. Um, I was acquainted to a, a head of scouting there, and they gave me an opportunity to to be a voluntary scout, yeah. which is uh, to learn the ways of being a scout. So, after a good two months uh, with them, um, I decided to approach an international sc- uh, scout, which is right now the scout for uh, the Spanish side. And yeah, from then on, it just took off. It just took off from that. Uh, I received a lot of media attention in Malaysia after that, and yeah, I started to write more articles, and here we are, you know. Okay. Already from that, I have so many questions in my head. <laughs> I'll start. I'll start with this. Yeah, go on. You mentioned that scout scouting mm-hmm. aligned with your core values. Yes. What are those core values? Okay. Um, the thing is, how I see myself is a person who, who. Uh, is comfortable in facing adversity and how we progress, we progress from that, how we transform ourselves into a better person when we are facing adversity. So, um, because I, I mentioned I grew up uh, when I wa- where I was a minority, you know, yeah. uh, abroad. How long did you spend in country? Uh, I was around there was four to five years. Uh. Yeah, you got family out there. Yeah, family there. Nice. Four to five years, and before I came back uh, to Malaysia. Yeah, you know, getting bullied and all that, and how how I slowly uh, was got into the community was basically through football. Yeah, and um, Wait, sorry, how old were you when you were in country? I was so those four or five years. Um, how old was I? I came back when I was like thirteen. Okay, so yeah, quite so young. I was quite young. Yeah. I was quite young. Yeah, but I guess th- that football culture is instilled in you. Yeah, at, at that time. At that when. time, I I really didn't. I I wasn't really into football. Huh. It's funny. It's a funny thing. But then um, I was invited to play uh, with with the the people who actually helped me outside of uh, from being bullied. Yeah. Which is uh, I still remember him, uh, Daniel. Um, what is he, Daniel? If you're yeah, you, bro. Daniel Aj. I'll tag you in this TikTok. Shout out to you, bro. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. And yeah, he helped me a lot. You know, um, like uh, the funny thing is. Uh, it's because I, I don't know if I can say this, but he was uh, he was uh, an African descent. Okay. So he knew the the difficulty of being uh, racially profiled. So he helped me a lot, 
And from then on, I started to play football. And then started to play football. I started as a goalkeeper. As a goalkeeper, and yeah, I, I was very terrible at goalkeeper. Okay, fair. Like the first, the first <laughs> game I remember was like, I don't know. I don't know if you remember this. The first game, and and Han Han, I still remember you. Uh, we lost ten nil. Oh, like, you were the yeah. keeper. I was the keeper. Like, for the bro. first half, I was the keeper. And then um, for, oh, for the first, for half. The first half, yeah. Okay. And then uh, I was like, no, nah, coach, I can't play keeper. <laughs> After ten, yeah, I thought, don't no, think it's no, 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 it's not, it's not the after the ten goals. It's like the total game. Oh, the total yeah, game. Okay. I don't know how how many I I let in. I think it's probably three or something. Okay, okay. And then um, I was like, nah, coach, please don't put me in goal. <laughs> so I move it forward to play as a defender. And then man got two penalties in the game. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> uh, conceded. Yeah, another conceded. So I was like, bro, this is not for me, bro. Yeah. This is not for me. Yeah. And then um, you, you you don't want to move out after that. You were like. No, I said, bro, put me in midfield. <laughs> okay, okay. And yeah, I found myself playing midfield, and okay. that was where I think I grew more as a player. Yeah. Because I I love the, the the position. You know, I played as a holding midfielder at that time, like, and like an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And how how quick my progress was that starting from a normal schoolboy, I just kept on playing, playing, and playing, and training with the school team, and then uh, I was offered. During the, my final year in in the in the UK, yeah. I was in the Coventry City U setup, uh, oh. Coventry City yeah. Academy. Do, yeah. Do you have a British passport? No. I don't know. No. That's why I couldn't stay. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't stay. But we was allowed to mm. to play because I was, um, I I got through the all the school, um, you know, the yeah. school years. Yeah. So we was allowed. So it was only for a year. I got to play with them, uh, which was in the under twelve, under thirteens. Yeah. So yeah, it, it was a good experience, and then I came back to Malaysia, and yeah, there goes my football career. After I came back to Malaysia, yeah, and everything stopped after I came back to Malaysia. Really, I, I stopped playing football. Um, like I stopped wanting to compete at a higher level when I came back to Malaysia, because uh, one at that time, uh, my parents was like, they weren't keen on the, on the football industry in Malaysia. In the football industry in Malaysia, you get what I'm saying, right? So I was like, yeah, cool, no worries, and yeah, just play casual football, but in, in social, social, just social yeah. football. Wow. Okay. Um, where do I start here? <laughs> Why didn't you want to continue playing after you came back? Why didn't I continue? Well, because the the thing is in Malaysia, a lot of things is is very different, you know, like how. You know the seniority things in in Malaysia. I remember like one of uh, in 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 high school that I managed to play, and the school team was. Um, I definitely knew I was I, I played uh, better than one of my peers, and basically the the coach played the senior above me because he said this is his last year, <laughs> he's not gonna play. So mm. th- that's when I thought like, it, even if uh, even if I put hard work yeah. into it. People won't realize, so that's like, nah, it's okay. Yeah, I'll just move on. Yeah, yeah. That that is the unspoken reality of it. Yeah, it is. It's very easy to say, um, you know, hard work, hard work mm-hmm. will get you there. The honest truth is, right, is that it's not enough. Yeah, your hard work is is just not enough. Yes, bro. you know, there is so many other things that comes into play. There's so many factors. There's there, so though. many factors. You know, I've I've had I won't mention the name, mm-hmm. but I've had pros. Who's come to me and said, like they're gonna take a break from playing? You know, they've been playing pro for five mm-hmm. years, but then they just said that just mentally it's too much. You know, they 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 told me themselves like the hard work is just not enough. Yes. You know, and when when you're sacrificing yeah. so much of your life, mm-hmm. so like you you you're putting so many things away mm-hmm. to try play pro football here. You know, you're you're finding for a club every season, yeah. right? You're jumping around in different states. Mm-hmm. You know, some months you might not even get a wage. So, it's it's very hard to see it through mm-hmm. when you don't really get to f- reap the benefits of your hard work, yeah. right? Backtrack to when you were playing for commentary. Mm-hmm. Y- you were playing games for them in the under 12s, under 13s. Yeah. I guess I'm asking this because um, mm-hmm. of the fact that I've had friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my friends, Adam. Adam Hamid. Um, no, Adam uh. Roshan. Have you heard of him? Um, he went over to the UK to play for Brook House College, yeah. and then I think through playing um, Brook College, they play like some Cat One mm-hmm. academies over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he was playing for Forest. 
for us 15s at the time. Okay. Um, while he was 13, you know, he was captaining the side, he was playing really well. Mm -hmm. He played against Jude Bellingham at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and what got in the way was the visa. Fine. Was the playing visa, right? So, at under 12, under 13, was that not like an issue? Like, do it was not, not an issue because um, I believe it was like, you know, um, when you go through the, 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 school, the, school, the schooling phase, yeah. like you get registered as one of the students that go th got through to the, uh, to the uh, club. Okay. Like, for example, like at that time, we had, you know, like the comparison we have with uh, over there and here is the MSSS. Okay. So basically, uh, my school, we, we were okay during that time to play. Um, we, we got into the final. Uh, I lost. The final, I, I missed the penalty as well. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah, and we we earned we earned a place lah to be there. Yeah. And I I got to play like two games, two games. It was only two games, and yeah, it wasn't the visa wasn't in the way. Okay. I think it's because um, at thirteen. Yeah. I think it, it doesn't. I, I'm not really sure, but I I, I play lah. It was it was okay. Okay. La. Okay. Cool. Mm. But I'm sure you're aware of of this barrier that mm -hmm, is now mm -hmm, in yep, place, yep. right? A lot of Malaysian players here who hasn't gone overseas go with the idea that if I'm good enough, mm -hmm. I can play overseas, right? Yep. But very much so, again, like we said, so many so factors many that come into play yep. besides just being good on the pitch, mm -hmm. you know, like your visa, yes. it, you know, it gets in the way of everyone. So, what's your thoughts on that? And, and because, I guess I'm mentioning this because there are a lot of so-called academies mm -hmm. where they're paid to play yes and they essentially sell a dream to the players i don't disagree with what they're doing in mm -hmm. a sense that if a player from here goes and join the academy even if they pay to play mm -hmm. i'm sure that they will come back a better player mm -hmm. given that they're just in a new environment you put yourself in a new environment with different coaches yeah. for sure you will see progress yeah. but at the same time also these academies sell a dream to them saying oh you know you come to us you make it pro you make it pro and a lot of them end up going, mm -hmm. and not only clubs, I think a couple of agents as well, based on what I've heard from people telling me, that's a touchy subject, won't <laughs> mention names, right? <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on that? Well, Rania, I, I agree, because right now, there, there's an increase of, you know, all, all these uh, academy that, that is um, offering dreams for players, pay, pay to play, and I've always uh, held onto the principle that um, if you're good, you'll be offered a scholarship to play. And if it doesn't, there's always another way that uh, yeah. you're, you're still good, but all those uh, factors come into play. And um, the the price to play is is very hard, you know. And for people who wants to go and reach their dreams to play, and to be coming back empty-handed because they can't be offered contracts, you know, because. Let's be real, uh, let's be real. Malaysia is not being looked on as, as a footballing nation. We aren't, we aren't looked on. And I'm talking from the perspective of a fan and also perspective as a scout. And why, why they are not looked on is because that um, we have no marketable value in our league. Like um, even for instance, if I was scouting a player for the Malaysian league and we want to uh, sell them abroad, it's very difficult. Because they will say like, mm, you you know the the, the qualities that, that are missing and yeah sometimes it's just it doesn't work in your way, so it's very tough on the players themselves and but yeah like I said we we, we rate what the club uh, what the academy is doing that training them to be a better player but yeah I still feel for them lah. How do you fix this issue? Mm, for me. It's very tough to fix, but if you want to... Oh, where do we start? I where do we start to make changes? I think in Malaysia, we start in Malaysia dulu lah. Yeah. In Malaysia, uh, I think like league, Super League clubs, they need to have their own academy. And then we need to start implementing the Category 1, the Category 2, which is, I think, being implemented by the, um, I think, Super Rimau, yep. which is the Category Bronze and Gold and, and, and so on. And I still think... Um, League, Super League clubs They need academies Because How are we going to Keep Producing players Is through the academies it's, I'm not Against the AMD program But For me it's, 
it's weird seeing that national call ups you see 26 players for example mm-hmm. 26 players from AMD and you have uh, another six for example for from local clubs and i think it's it's not disheartening because qatar is doing that and and, and they're producing good good players yeah. but yeah are we qatar yeah. uh, in 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 yeah. uh, football league Term yeah. and Qatar is fr- the Aspire Academy is yes, the, the okay Aspire Academy yeah. and um, yeah so first Super League clubs need to have academies and then instill grassroots coaching in 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 the community where we have a lot of talented coaches a lot of talented young coaches but they are not getting the opportunity you know so I think what better way to instill passionate young and um, hard driven coaches. Uh, to to Super League clubs I think that it's a win-win for them because they will get the the people who want who wants to make a difference mm. and yeah please Super yeah. League yeah please do something <laughs> I'm not against AMD either yeah. it's a fantastic setup yeah. we, we know I've, I've been there mm. it's class but the problem is that there's only one mm-hmm. yeah and for Majority of the national team call-outs from under 12s, under 16s already, all coming from AMD. Yep. They go and play overseas, you know, mm-hmm. and then they come back with good results. And then for us to say that's Malaysia, mm-hmm. it's not really a good representative. Yeah. Really, you know, like we're not. Th- it's it's more AMD which is going. Yeah. It's not yep. the whole of it's Malaysia. Not, you it's know? not Malaysia. Yeah. So we can't yep. categorize one academy mm-hmm. for the whole country. Yeah. So what it needs to be done is that, like you said, mm-hmm. you know, if we have AMD set up everywhere yep. then maybe we can start to see a bit of progress right, right. because um, this, what made me think about this is because I'm not trying to um, push my club Kerteh is because um, I saw myself like we have players that, that can actually play yeah. and um, I think that some of them have op- have hardships you know because we know how getting into AMD is difficult like I'm not talking about the process because it's a touchy subject as well. Yeah, so, touchy subject. Um, but yeah, if, if players get the opportunity to play uh, in another academy at a Super League club, like for example, we have, uh, for example, we put Selangor and KL, they have under 14s or under 12s. Mm. Um, yeah, I think people would start to see the development of players more. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure about the, you know, like we have the, I forgot what it's called back then, Liga. Like we had Omba FC and all, which is one, one MCC. One MCC, yeah. yeah. Um, that was a good. That was a good. Um, yeah, it was good. Bro. It's a good tournament yeah. as well to to explore young mm. young talents. But yeah, they, they should keep those things running. Running. Yeah. Like um, I, I'm not I'm not really sure that if we have the state team is still relevant or not. I'm not really sure. You know, as like, in like MSSM, MSSM and, and all. In in yeah. They, Be- they because should. the thing is, they don't have the next pass for them. Fun. Yeah, they the don't perfect. have the next path. So, if you fit, if you play fully in during your school years, but then you have no nowhere to go after that. Yeah. What's the What's the story? Like for example, even our universities, they don't have athletic uh, athlete scholarship. You know, like for them to to play, and our uh, Liga University is also IPT. I Liga IPT is also yeah. not not on par with with all those things. Yep. A lot of things uh, that we need to restructure and, and it is, it's very difficult, you know. But if we could, Super League clubs, yeah, please yeah. get an academy. <laughs> Why don't they? Ooh. To be honest, I think it's because um, we are always being thrown at the fact that football is a business. And it is. It is a business. And... I think in Malaysia, it's very hard for investors to invest in, in clubs because, okay, uh, we look for example, players are being offered uh, one year contracts, one year contracts and every transfer season, you never see a player uh, being paid uh, the transfer fee. So how is a club going to be sustainable if they are releasing players for free? Yeah. So how can they put money that the investors give to pay for the wages of the players? Yeah. So where can they f- allocate another ten percent of their money to build an academy? Uh-huh. So I think that that's the sole reason. Why are these players being sold for free? Why why is why is the why is in, why is in, it no in my opinion? Free? I think it's because, like I said, um, clubs are very very um, 
not confident in in giving contracts longer than a year. Mm. Yeah, we're not Chelsea. We're not giving eight point five a million contract. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm talking about you, Modric. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like we we are being offered a year contract. So clubs just like yeah, I'm going to buy you next season, mm. but we'll wait for your contract. Okay, to finish. Yeah, then it happens and. There's no footballing revenue from that, and okay, if we ask from uh, the the fans, mm, are you buying jerseys? Are you buying merchandises from from the club? And some of them say yes, but it's it's not the the legal jersey. Yeah. So a lot of things, and the clubs are not confident to give a long a, a long contract because investors giving money for a year only. Like okay, this is untuk bayar mm. your salary for a year. That's what. That's it. that's it. Yeah, and we we're not sure if we're going to sponsor you next season. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like that lah. From from my perspective, can football be a profitable business? Uh, there's a lot of clubs that that turn it that turns into a a good a good business is mm-hmm. when clubs are selling. Yeah, we see the likes of Ajax. We see the likes of. Um, RC Strasbourg, so so many clubs that I, I could name that have been producing a lot of talents and they're selling players for for a good fee, and yeah, it can be a business if if the right structure is is involved lah. That's what I believe. In Malaysia, there's so many loopholes, so yeah. I mean, in any business, you're always gonna have to lose first, yeah. right? So, in order for us to see this change. Mm-hmm. It will have to take these investors to to really believe in in again, like we said, like like the process mm-hmm. of I'm gonna have to lose first, mm-hmm. but I will reap the benefits after yep. this investment into mm-hmm. the development and this grassroots will, mm-hmm. you know, if they if they have that set up, mm-hmm. then do you think there will be the potential for for it to become profitable? Um, I think investors will always want to invest in a club that has a, a proper plan, you yep. know, a proper plan to. Uh, that covers from the senior team until the academy. Mm. The core values. What do you want at a club? Like um, that's why I was involved in Kerti because they had a plan. They had a plan of of a twenty year plan of where they want to be and what are the core values of them. And I think that's why uh, we are reaping rewards right now because recently uh, one of our youth prospect uh, Akil Akasha, which is uh, an under sixteen captain, uh, he was. He was he was captured by uh, Terengganu. Okay. Uh, for nice. For Belia. How old is he? He's 16. He's playing Belia this year. And he's 184. Oh wow! What uh, position? Goalkeeper. Oh, he's a keeper. Okay. So, but the thing is, we produced the talent uh, in Kerti, but Terengganu captured him, and yeah, we we we're not getting any fees from that. So that's another thing, where local clubs produce players, and then they're not getting paid. Yeah. The we 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 call this the compensation of um, development fee. Okay. We're not getting paid that in yeah. Malaysia. The, um, there's I, I'm, I've never heard there's a club that pays for development fees. Mm-hmm. So I've never heard of it either. Yeah. Yeah. It's only popular in 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 England, mm. and um, when that happens, we how how are investors uh, looking from that perspective? Like, what can we do? Yeah. Because We, for example, we throw like two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand to for for this to to actually work for you to grow in Kerti. In in Kerti, yeah. and then all of a sudden, boom! They uh, just get taken. Players get that. taken, and yeah, yeah it, it sucks. But that's the harsh reality that we have to face right now. And hopefully, um, the league, the the FA, knows that this cannot be sustainable for local clubs that that are willing to fork out their own money. To to help the development, so yeah. Then again, clubs. Oh, okay. There's so many okay, things. I, I think this okay. podcast could go for like twenty four. <laughs> yeah, seconds. yeah. If you want to so just talk about what we can change, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, I didn't really think about that at all. Yeah. Like for for these academies mm-hmm. to to find it worth their time, I guess, yeah. to develop these players. But then development fee. Huh? So so a development fee is essentially. The like this this class. Yeah, okay, okay. For example, um, this this is uh, I I I did this uh, in England. Where, okay. For example, you had you was playing. 
okay. for Kerti, which is a Division 5 team, okay. for five years. Yeah. You're 12, and yeah. then you go on to 17. Yeah. And then there's always a fee that uh, for once you, every year mm -hmm. is how much? For example, one year is 100,000. Okay. So that as you go up, and then, for example, JDT buys you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry, JDT. Uh, JDT buys you, and then JDT has to pay the compensation of 500,000. Uh, for example. And that's what happens in England. Like uh, yeah. Oh wow! And, and then they they look at the category of the academy as well. Like for example, if your Cat One Academy yeah. is cheaper lah, yeah, because uh, you have the, all the facilities and I all. I see. If your category three and yeah. uh, below, mm. yeah, that's when that's how the yeah. academies overseas they grow. Uh, and all this legaling is done by the FA. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's where. Mm -hmm. Okay, damn. See, I didn't know about that, bro. Yeah. Damn. Okay. No, of course, like. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I played 1MPC back then, uh -huh. right? Like, under 16, we finished academy football. Uh -huh. 17, 18, 19, three years uh -huh. where players are in this, like, limbo phase. Yeah. We're like, where do we go? Yeah. Right? If you get into a billiard squad, okay, good. Yep. But then, if you don't, then you have three years of where maybe you might be playing social league or... Yeah. And, like, you miss out on three years of development, you know? Yeah. So, why is there no 17? Why is there no 18? Why is there no 19? Then, again, that just... I'm assuming it goes down to, to the budget thing yep. and then links back to just what we talked about just now mm -hmm. where how are these investors supposed to find an incentive for them mm -hmm. to invest if there's no like long-term yes. goal to it, you know? Yeah. If they invest again, like you said, it's just, it's just like a one-year thing, right? Damn, bro. There's a lot of things, bro. Like, for example, because in Malaysia, we have sports mm -hmm. school as well. Mm -hmm. And um, I think most of the budget thing goes to sports school. Yeah. And they tend to uh, put out where sports school is, is the is the way to go if you want to play at a competitive level for a sport. Yeah. But I think that's just a stigma because there's still players that, you know, I, I think um, when I was scouting as well, there was players that they have the bad days. And for example, if they played the tournament uh, very bad, it was probably a one-off. So if we look at them again, and the tournament was for them to go into Sekolah Sukan, yeah. sports school, and they, 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 they didn't go through. So, and then you see them play in the social league, they're good. Yeah, see, those are the variables that we need to see. And how can we ensure that the, those variables are being taken care of is we have a, a youth league. So that it's a progressive uh, growth. Yeah. We can see like, okay, this week, Okay, you may be good. Yeah. Next week, you're good. Yeah. And then, yeah, you're keeping up. Yeah. So, you monitor the con consistency. Yeah, the, consist yeah, the consistency yeah. goes on. Because a lot of tournaments in Malaysia are carnival-based. Like, we play okay, three days. Yeah. yeah, and then... <laughs> two games in the day. Two games in the day. It's crazy. <laughs> 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so, those are the things that, that, that makes me like... Yeah. Nah, this mm. Malaysian football is, 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 is yeah. tough. Yeah. yeah. So, like you said, the we have the talent pool. Mm -hmm. Do you do any scouting in in KL? Or in, in Malaysia? In Malaysia, yeah, 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 I do. Yeah. Yeah. So whereabouts are you looking? Um currently for for basically because I'm not attached to any Malaysian league side, so yeah. Um, yeah. Not yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Rani. Um basically um if if we're looking for uh clubs internationally, I would look in the Super League. Lah. Okay. Super League okay. and Liga Perdana as well mm. a few other times um, but right now more focused on Super League okay. but for scouting for fun for Kerti because uh, the, the the first scouting task I did for Kerti was when we was allowed to we got the invitation to play Piala Sultan Pahang okay. and yeah I was scouting in a Social League and a Social League? Huh? yeah Social League and there were a few what it, and this is open? Uh? Open, open open it was open yeah, yeah it was uh, a, a good few players uh, yeah, yeah. I, I managed to pick out and basically last social league they have all their uh, work and all so yeah. I called a few and said ah, they can't make it uh -huh. because they're um, working and so on so yeah I, I do scouting in Malaysia so would, would you go to the social leagues already with an idea of looking at a player or are you going like you know there's games going on from 8 uh -huh, to 12 uh -huh. are you going sitting there with a chair and go okay let me see usually uh, if I go up like I, I pull up and I say, okay, this week... Pull uh, up to the game. Yeah, pull up to the game. 
just just watch and see. Okay, this guy, this guy is decent, and I'll go, I'll go back next week. Okay. See if, if the guy is okay and he, yep. and he fits the criteria yep. of the club uh, that we are looking for in a player. Yeah. Yeah. And the then, player profile. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll just approach him. Yeah. Because socially, there's no agent. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Approach the player yeah. themselves. Are there others doing what you do? From what I know, I'm, I'm not really sure. You're not sure? Yeah, because um, probably, I think most of the scouting in Malaysia that is being done is from coaches themselves. Okay. I think, la, I think. Okay, yeah. Because... Um, again, assumption. Yeah, assumption. Because we, we don't know. Because, yeah. again, I'm, I'm fairly new in, in, the, in, the, in this industry and there's not many Malaysian names that, that are in the industry, but I would like to congratulate FAM as well for um, taking the step yep. uh, to get talent ID. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah new, really new scouting friends, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. literally. And, but yeah, in Malaysia, there's not a lot. I think it falls back to coaches mm. that do the scouting. Yeah, I, I think I think very much so. Even when when we were playing 1MCC and stuff, like, the the scouts who would come would be coaches themselves from, yeah. like, you know, these different Super League clubs, especially looking for, like, Berlin president players yeah, at the time. Yeah, yeah. So, there is a bit going on, mm -hmm. but... For sure, there needs to be more, right? Yes. Because, like, even even until today, like last night, mm -hmm. I was at New Camp yeah. watching the social games, and you just see some one or two players where, yeah. like, wow, like they really went like under under the radar, you know? So yeah. like, there's a lot of untapped talent pool. There's a lot, bro. Right? Um, we had a game which was Kerti against uh, BISP mm. Cruzeiro. Yeah, we drew that game. Uh, Did they come down? They they came down, yeah. and there was to Terengganu. They came down. They came down to we play in KL Club okay. Sultan Sulaiman. Okay. And um they were doing a KL tour. So we played them and there was this Malaysian that was playing for BSP Cruzeiro. Who? I swear to God. His name is uh, Atik Zaina. Okay. I, I spoke with him la. Uh, he's, he's very good on the boy. He's, he's very composed. And I was like, bro, how how, how did we know about this guy? Mm -hmm. And he's only seventeen years old and Hopefully he, he can secure a, a, a trial in the coming days. But yeah, he, one of the players, one of the play, Malaysian okay. players, okay. Yeah, I saw, I saw myself. I was like, bro, this is hard to find in Malaysia yeah. because, you know, what we want in a midfielder nowadays is, is scanning and and the ability to spray diags and and, and, and the, the short passes and composure. And I was like, yo, he, he has the raw potential of that. And yeah, has he graduated from BISP? I think he's he's only he's in his last year, if I'm okay. not mistaken. Okay. So yeah, hopefully, hopefully there's there's hope for him. Well, he's not the only one playing overseas. Yeah. So many out there, a lot but of a lot of them come back mm -hmm. and struggle to play here. Mm -hmm. And based on the conversations that I've had, one of the reasons why they find it difficult to break through even when they come back mm -hmm. is just because of the the football culture is different. You know, like in terms of like the the playing mm -hmm. style, the Malaysian yep. playing style, which is very typical two things: high press, long ball. High press, yep. It is very common. Mm -hmm. Super League, two same. Same, right? Yeah. Because everyone is high pressing, uh -huh. and the only solution that they have to their long problem ball. is long ball. <laughs> so it ends up going back, back, back yeah. to back. You know, back to back game. Um, and then your individual brilliance will sometimes yeah. renew the game. You know, so um, are you in contact with any of these players overseas? Yeah. Yeah. Few, yeah. A few, and I think I'm getting the same as well, the same answers from them. But uh, the things I always tell them is that this is what will make you stronger. You know, like when we are in a minority, as I mentioned mm -hmm. a lot of times, when we are in a minority, we tend to grow stronger. Yeah. So this is only a matter of time, and uh, I mentioned many times uh, in on my Twitter because people keep asking me. Yeah. Uh, regarding yeah, Twitter is becoming a bit more of a professional space. Yeah, because right. um, I think I grew a lot on, on Twitter, to be fair. Yeah. And, um, like, uh, for example, uh, I tweeted about Lokma and Hadi, Hadi Faya, yeah. like, how they grew as a player. Like, uh -huh. um, it's not it's not just footballing uh, ability, but how they grew as a person. Like, yeah. for example, Hadi uh, became an ambassador for, for yeah, cool. the, the city because... He, he he wanted to learn the language of J J Japanese. Oh, okay, he, he okay, that's what he meant. So, I thought that, Yakult, bro. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that, that's why he, he, he managed to grow. Yeah. You know, he, he was adapting. Mm. But I think it's just opportunities, you know, like footballers need game time. And if you can't get game time, find game time elsewhere. It's okay if it doesn't work out. Yeah. It's not like the end of the world if you mm. fail abroad. But mm. 
um, if we get reports that you came back because of homesick, uh, that yeah. that's like mm, another question. Yeah. So and he, he sucked through there for a good couple of years. Yeah, well. a good couple of years, yeah. and Lukman is still is still doing okay. Uh-huh. And um, yeah, he, he, they're all adapting very well. And I think uh, what Malaysians uh, we lack is the ability to adapt. You know how I see things is is adapting because you need to adapt to situations. You know, like you can't take no for an answer when you've been given an opportunity to play abroad. And yeah, we, we're struggling yeah. in adapting. Yeah. Ability to adapt, mm-hmm. right? Outside your comfort zone. Um, are, are you in like conversation with these players? Yeah, I am. You uh, are, right? Yeah, I talked with a few and uh-huh. they, they all say the same thing. They all said the same thing. Uh, like um, the difficulty in adapting. But uh, what I always tell them is that how can you adapt from that is, um, yeah, you just have to work your way. And I've mentioned many times how you pick yourself up when you're uh, acting as a minority and a few of them are doing very good for example um, we're talking about Hadi Fayyad uh, Lukman Hakim mm. how they can survive that long is um, how they want to adapt is um, by learning the language of the countries that they are in and I know for a fact that Hadi can speak uh, Japanese because I, I, th- I think I saw an interview that he did was fully in Japanese. Yeah, uh, yeah. I saw. I saw the yeah, online he, one. The online one. Yeah, yeah he did a, uh, an interview in Japanese. So, yeah, it's happy to see that players are willing. You know, like, okay, if I want to uh, survive here, it's not only the football that mm. I need, but it's also um, yourself in in the community. And yeah. I think what they are doing is very great. And and Luki as well, what he's doing is uh, is, is is great as well. He I see him conversing in English with with his mates so yeah it's good and players need to understand that uh, we as fans need to understand that if they if they uh, are not successful abroad it's okay it's not the end of the world but it's the it's the experience that they get from from that you know from the uh, from the three year stint the four year stint mm-hmm. it's what they can bring back to the community is that um, you see how can we say it how can I say without being attacked? Okay, okay. <laughs> Basically, fans, um, we just need to calm ourselves down a bit. We, we, we can't put high expectations on players. Like, we always need to look things from a, a, a real standpoint, you know, yeah. like, because we know uh, where our country is uh, in the footballing pyramid. So, there's no way that we can go, let's like, say, like, yes, this guy is the next Messi. The next Messi is from Malaysia. <laughs> we have to be realistic. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, we as fans, uh, we, we can't pressure them, you know, if they're, if they're not getting game time, we don't go uh, to the club's pages and say, where's <laughs> that player, the where's the player, yeah, it shows us as a, as a, a citizen of our country, is, yeah. is that how we are, and yeah. it's not good as well for mm. them, um, yeah, we need to calm ourselves down, lower the expectations, mm. always give them support, mm-hmm. because you never know, when their time comes, that's when they go bang, yeah, so, yeah. Do you monitor the progress of these players? Yeah, I do. What differences do you see? For example, let's take Hadi, for example, mm-hmm. right? Now, just nearly signed mm-hmm. for Perak. In Japan for four or five years? Yes. Right? How has his game changed as a nine? Well, from when he first went out to Japan, okay, and then now um, that he's back in Perak? What I saw was that uh, this was basically uh, just from sitting down and just watching him without getting my, my iPad and yeah. jotting that things down. What I saw was uh, his ability to link up play. I saw that he, he, he had it in him. He can do that. And uh, I, I think it was in the C games where he was linking up with Lukman. You know, Lukman played off more on the, on the, on the, wing, mm. on the winger role. And they, they formed a good partnership, you know, to, to play that. And Hadi, for me, um, I, I saw that he was more of a modern link. It was I don't, I'm not really sure if I could say this. It's, it's more of a of a Roberto Firmino as you know, like number nine that drops deep and yeah, hurricane, and, type yeah, hurricane type. And I, I said that in a podcast, in a different podcast before this, that he was a hurricane type. And yeah, I, I got blasted for it. And, <laughs> yeah, but sometimes people don't see. <laughs> Some people but don't yeah, see. Um, yeah, they'll see it this season, bro. They'll yeah, see they'll it this season. Bro. Yeah, he has that hurricane type. But people were screaming for that because. 
we are misguided by the fact that as a striker you need to score goals. I think that that that's just it and very traditional yeah. way of thinking, isn't it? Right. So, but yeah, Hadi moved as a player, as a, as a player that can link up well, and if he was given the opportunity, he can score because yeah. he can score those odd uh, mm. scrappy goals, mm. and yeah. Okay, talking about strikers, right? Let's go into a bit about maybe your your opinions as a scout, right? Mm-hmm. Again, different player profiles, of mm-hmm. course. What are some? Because I got this question a lot on my story. What are some attributes that you are looking? In a striker, you know, not not only technically wise, but uh-huh. maybe even like like physically, yep. you know, like what are some things which which attracts you as a scout? Okay, so when we're scouting, it depends on the club that we are scouting of for. Course. That's one thing. Yep. And um, what role, what what profile are they looking for? For example, um, if uh, for the club we are looking for a player that is more of a, a Eddie and Katia type, Gabriel Jesus type, where. You, you know, why specifically those players? Because reason? I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> okay, <got> it, <laughs> and basically, what what they offer as a player is um, the ability to drop deep, yep. and link up play, and mm. also uh, score. Because right now we're moving in a modern way of football, where strikers also act as an attacking yeah. midfielder. The nine and ten is and getting nine, yeah, combined. It's, it's getting combined. Yeah. So, what we want from a striker is uh, they're very hard. They rel- it's not like reliant is you want to press it's not you are being told to press but you want to press that's what we are looking for the tenacity to want to yeah yeah be the first trigger right yeah and and then um i would say obviously uh, a, a good finishing ability a clinical finishing ability and um i think what i what i would look for in a player is actually the the mental attributes actually like Okay, you have the technical ability, yeah. but are you this? Mm. Uh, are you are you him? Yeah. Uh, so, to for me to define him is that a player that is uh, is not loved by the by his surroundings, but is offering, I would say, good good reviews around his is uh, is surroundings like how you react to rea- uh, to referees, yeah. uh, how you react to um, challenges being made, mm. how you react to teammates. Um, Missing an opportunity, yeah. all those things that uh, we look for in a player, and if if you ex- display good qualities, then you di- you you can succeed because you have that different mentality. I would say, yeah. Yeah, understand. Mm-hmm. You've done scouting for for again, like you said, a mm-hmm. Spanish club, the English club. Any interesting stories from those from from? Are, are you still with them? Yeah, I'm still yeah. with them. So. Anything think, you uh, we as much as you can disclose. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, talk to me. I can just say that I was really close in uh, exporting our biggest talent abroad, lah. Okay. Okay. We we we'll let the viewers okay. uh, guess who it is. Okay. We can't disclose any I think names. I have an idea. Of who. Yeah, but it in was, this moment, our biggest talent. It was in the January transfer window. Like as in l- l- literally. Literally. Last month. Yeah. Okay, I, it was really close, and because uh, that player statistically he, he he was amazing, and the, the finance team was was also great. Uh, was also looking into the revenue from Malaysian fans as well, so it it, it was it was a it was a go. It was a nearly here we go. But <laughs> here yeah, we there, go. there were com- complications that I couldn't disclose okay. uh, what happened, but yeah. We 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 could have seen a, a a Malaysian player playing in the in La Liga too. We could have. So you're seeing paperwork and stuff, like yeah, sort of. all those things are. Wow. Yeah. And h- how much work has gone in this? Two to three months, you know. Like for me, preparing the reports, um, talking with the presenting to the recruitment team, mm-hmm. presenting to the finance team. Mm-hmm. Uh, Waiting for the here we go sign. Yeah. So it's good three months. Yeah. Uh. So instead of a business proposal, your proposal is the player. The yeah, player is the player, the proposal. Yeah. Because I mentioned like uh, I'm currently for the head of Asia for that club. So yeah. looking for talents around Asia for 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 that. I I sneakily put a report regarding our player and mm. somehow it got through and I was like, yo, this guy is good. So it was really close. It was really close. What are in these reports? Basically, uh, okay. Um, 
how he is as a player what he offers as a player his attacking attributes his defending attributes his mental attributes those things that uh, we put into consideration and how he developed in a three month period why three months because it, that there was um there was room for growth because mm-hmm. usually um how I would how I would do my uh follow up reports mm. is quarterly you know like three months three okay. months three okay months. got you so yeah yeah like for example uh, this that player he wasn't taking shots he wasn't taking shots mm-hmm. because he was assisting mm-hmm. and what I wanted from him I I said that in a report where what I wanted to see more of him was for him to take his shots yeah and I think it was in the second month he started taking shots mm-hmm. and he started scoring goals for fun yeah. and then um set pieces i said i wanted to see him take free kicks mm. and he scored like i think two free kicks in in that in that following month yeah that's when um i said okay i think this one we need to nila we need to forward it to the club and yeah it was really close so now it's it's gone down the route of more like analysis work right is mm-hmm. that like under the job scope of yeah, under the job, a scout yeah. as well it's under the job scope of scouting uh-huh. actually, to be fair yeah um there's a lot of things that For example, if you see a player, you have your main report. Yeah. And then that's when you have your follow-up reports, you know, that like you see um how the player grow. Mm-hmm. That's when the analysis comes in. Yeah. Yeah. Scouting is actually big because you have scouting for recruitment. Yeah. You have scouting for opposition analysis, okay. which is you see uh the op- opposition what are they going to play yeah. and then you have a a set piece analysis that there's so many things so many things but yeah. i'm more of a recruitment side okay. so yeah i'm yeah. in the recruitment and besides from just doing your courses uh-huh. how else did you develop your craft I, i'm still learning but um how i would say is that just never be afraid to ask uh questions from scouts from all over the world yeah like um create a linkedin if you want to be a scout mm. uh, because LinkedIn is so many opportunities where I got connected with uh, a lot of Premier League scouts as well like they I asked them like what how can we determine this player and yeah. and so on any questions that they are very happy to to answer and most of them are just willing to yeah, yeah for sure yeah willing to help because uh, as i mentioned hmm. scouting is um networking because on any given day there can be times where you might do them a favor they yeah, might do you a, a favor yeah scout can say hey we're going to set up a a a scouting network in 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 the, in this place mm. and we want you on board there's so many there's so many stories about that and and i've heard many as well so yeah is that how you got linked to uh we are scouting yep okay so through through linkedin through through, through linkedin through we are scouting and uh because the one of the the the, the my boss for we are scouting yeah, yeah. he was the one that managed to earn us all to be in a part of the the La Liga 2 side. So yeah. Do you think one of your goals is to to provide a bridge now for for players in our local scene? Yeah. That that, that is one of my main uh my main purpose of why I wanted to be a scout was that because I saw that the the pathway for our talents who had potential there was nowhere for them to go. Like Liga Super we they will be competing for imp- with uh from the imports yeah. like it will be difficult for them yeah. yes it's good for competition but we have to be realistic that um they need game time as well so you can't expect them to perform straight away if you if you're not giving them game time so i was like yeah why not um we take the the route of where we can help we can help and i can help so yeah i wanted to be yeah. a bridge uh for players to 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 move abroad and yeah it's it's not an agent i don't want to be an agent it's just yeah providing them reports ah yeah because i think there's there's one thing which i call like a natural filter mm. that happens in football like 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 we said again that mm. limbo phase uh-huh. between like the under 16 to like now mm. players under 18 they brought it down at least a year but those two years a lot of talented players mm-hmm. who find that okay maybe they had again these trials sometimes are just like a day where it's like Yeah. Five minutes in the seven v seven. Yes. If you don't do well there, then you don't you, get selected. You, right? You're cut off. And and so many players who are who are arguably good enough mm-hmm. ends up getting filtered out from football because they realize okay if I if I can't make it now, I then, can't make it then, no then, then now maybe I I need to go and study yes. and then again then we can talk about how the education system just does not align with yep. with with you know the the calendar that that yes, you know yes, William and President yes. plays football through so. 
So many variables eh? What is one solution to that problem that, that maybe you can brainstorm to? I'm sure you have ideas Yeah, I had, I had ideas um, for, the, was, for this limbo phase Well, because uh, when I was in uni I was also um, very active in, in you know uh, student representative things and I was the, the sports uh, bureau so what I wanted was um, because you know like how um, USA they work with like after school you get scholarships if yeah. you're if you're talented yeah. you get offered that and I was thinking like it's like student athletes yeah like why is Malaysia not offering that because in, in my school team there was a f- few decent players like I think the, the, the general stigma of good players is that they are uh, with, 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 all res- with all due respect to them is that they are from the class classes young below yep. young the ones young uh, it's not science stream it's, mm. it's, it's other other yeah, classes yeah. Like, right? so how can they be more successful is that if you offer them student athlete scholarships is that offer them courses young they can offer them pathway after yeah. Af- even if after sport yeah after sport if yeah. they get an injury or, or something yeah. a career ending injury like for example uh, they they have they show interest in electrical mm. offer them that yeah. electrical electrical certificate lah. yeah but student scholarship offer them that and i think that's one way if we want to keep our pool of players uh, is that the the during the limbo phase choose the ones yang but they have potential you know like mm. okay uh, because to get into university you have the requirements and all but the other requirements you must have is that you're a student athlete so i think that's how we can tackle that you know? yeah 100% of especially for like for like the the B40 you mm-hmm. know where yeah, yeah. where again i've 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 had players who i've seen my own eyes mm-hmm. who of class bro. yes yes so yes. class but they're unable to play bully president because you know they can't cover the expense of traveling mm-hmm. It's just too much for them, you know. They have other commitments outside. There's no support behind them, so they just end up getting filtered out. Yeah, I I, I have this story of a friend of mine who, I swear to God, uh, he's a really really good player. He's a really really good player, and I'm not exaggerating. He's really good. Uh, he was offered a contract uh, for this uh, for this club, uh, which is playing the Super League for Belia. He was offered for Belia, but he couldn't make the cut because he said that. Uh, what he was getting paid is not enough for him to commute because he he was struggling as well. He, he was from a a family uh, um, young B40, we would say, and um, for him, be, he coming up to me to say that it really broke me down because I was like, bro, are you, are you for real? Uh, because he had the talent, bro. I swear to God, he he had the talent. He was really, really, really good, and he, he couldn't play. A dream was stopped because of um, financial things like that. So, yeah. I mean, again, touch the subject, right? And we all, I know it's service level. Mm-hmm. Maybe there are other reasons why it is mm-hmm. like this, but I'll mention it anyway. Mm-hmm. Most of the Bullion and President teams, from what I know, mm-hmm. are not fully funded by the Super League teams. Mm-hmm. They are funded by sponsors. Sponsors, yes. You know, and investors who, mm-hmm. are, who are willing to invest in these teams. But... What? How is the pathway now? The pathway is then just maybe wearing the same jersey as the the yeah. the you know the first the team. First team. Besides that, like the players are getting paid pennies. You know, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. they're expected to train almost like a pro. Yeah. They're coming in double days, five six times yeah. a week. Some of them are students. Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes they have to leave classes early. Yeah. You know, and if they're getting paid eight hundred ringgit a month, bro, one point two a month. Yeah. It's it's how, how, are they, how are they how are they going to see it through? Yes. You know, and and again, I've talked about this to Ruben as well. Mm-hmm. It's not that we want it for the money, but we need money to survive, bro. Yeah, it's needed. Don't, it don't is don't at the end of the day, it is a job. Yes, it is a job. I, mean, I know we're going to recession and stuff, but it's just it is really disappointing. It's right. It's a very sensitive subject, you know. When it we're, is, when it we're is, talking about money, you know, no one is going to address it. Yeah, because so if I'm going to get shit for it. I rather get shit for it, <laughs> but let us talk about it. Because I think uh, people will say that sometimes footballers uh, play because of the money. I think it's very disheartening, you know, if if, you, if we're going to say that, for example, if you move to a big club because of a money move, or, or because you're getting a paid higher salary, I think it's like we can't blame it on them. You can't blame it because yeah, I feel like if you deserve that yeah. that that co- yeah. uh, that transfer, then go ahead. Yeah. 
You're still playing football. You're still playing football, yeah. It's, if it's in business and you move to another company where you get yeah. paid a higher salary, no one bats an eye. No one bats an eye. But yeah. now, you go to another club mm-hmm. that pays you more or you're just in it for the money. Good. You have family to support. Mm-hmm. You have yourself to support. You got to try to find your future. Yep. There's nothing wrong with it, dude. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, I think it's just the, the general... I think some of Malaysian fans, they still believe that we need to play for our locality. You know, like yeah. If you're born from Selangor, Play, play with Selangor with pride and if you move to a, a rival um, yeah you, you're getting stick for it lah yeah. definitely being labelled as a big uh, as a money grabbing yeah. uh, thing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so where do you see our football going in in these next five years do you think that there will be changes that will move us in the right direction honestly honestly speaking um there will be progression, but it will be very slow. But the good thing is that um, we're moving in the right direction in terms of setting up a platform for scouts, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, FAM is, is um, giving out talent ID courses. And yeah. And do you know, like, about those courses, like, the, the syllabus to say so? Or like I, It's just the same. The syllabus is just the same. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, it's more of... Um, I think the FAM one is like, you need to understand um, what they are wanting for in 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 the in the Malaysian system. Like mm. for example, if uh, I did a course for FA England and also FA Wales, yeah. um, like those FAs, they have different targets in a player depending on the culture of football that they play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For okay. example, like England, uh, yeah. they want to have a player like Harry Kane, for example, yeah. but uh, Wales they don't want they want don't want a Harry Kane type. They want a, a Gareth Bale type. Okay. Uh, like strong, masculine, and all that yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is in Malaysia though. What do you think? Who is the who is that player? Who is that player? Uh, <laughs> I think that that I think that I, I've been hearing rumors uh, that they said find we want you to find the next Arif Aiman. Okay. I think that's class, that. bro. Class. He's class, bro. He's oh class. my god, class. He's too the, They're prison friendly in Dubai. Oh wow, bro. How can man, man scored against <laughs> Dortmund and Dude, Moscow, bro? Class, bro, class. <laughs> so, speaking about Malaysian mm-hmm. culture in football now, and I know you watch a lot of ball. Yep. How would you describe Malaysian football? What is the culture of it, the essence of it? On, off the ball, on, on the ball, off the ball, everything. Go. First, off the ball were very bad. Okay. Just on the get-go. Yeah, okay, cool. very bad off the ball. Uh, on the ball, I think we still we are still stuck with individual brilliance, you know, because yeah. modern football we're moving into a tactically uh, where every everyone has a key role. Like, 100%. if you move, where should I be? Yeah. When, when when I move, yeah. where should you be? Yeah. It's place. It's, it's, it's no more yeah. just mind yeah. 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 And I think Malaysia is 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 still yeah. a long way away from yeah. that. And again, when I was speaking to Ruben, mm. Ruben's telling me that he joined, I, you remember the podcast, right? He joined Slango when he was 17 and it's the first time he'd been taught something tactically uh-huh. and he went, what the hell am I being yep. taught right now, right? So he gets taught at such a, such a late age. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, over like in England and stuff, like how young are these players being taught like um, this, this move, off-ball movement and stuff? I think off the ball movements, I, I started to learn when I was in under 12. Wow, under 12. 12. Off the ball, only off the ball. But tactically, belum lagi lah. Like we, we didn't press on like team pressing at yeah. that time. Under 12. Mm. I think it was during my time. Okay. Uh, I don't know how, how modern it is now lah. Yeah. Um, but during my time, off the ball, under 12. Mm. And then tactically uh, moving was 13 lah. Like macam as a unit, what should we do at 13? Okay. Like for that's what I try to implement in Kerti. Uh, everyone from the youth until the senior team, we play with one DNA, which is playing out from the back. Yeah. So we DNA. want everyone to yeah. to be comfortable at the back, yeah. and yeah, the under twelve is also playing yeah. out from the back. Yeah, the DNA. Yeah. Like, I mean, I've watched a couple Super League games because some of my players play. Mm-hmm. Very rarely I'll see a six even drop into a pocket to try and receive from a, from the back four. Yeah. You know, it's always just okay. Squeeze and <laughs> send, let's go. Inshallah, maybe yeah. the ball will drop to me and, and we'll do something about it when, when, then, yes. when the time comes. And pray. Yeah. Yeah. Like, even when you watch international football as well, mm-hmm. we start to see the culture of these uh-huh. different countries. You know, when I watch Thailand, please correct me if I'm yeah. wrong, they seem to have a bit more tenacity to just pop the ball around, yeah. nice low balls um, and good combinations, 
Thailand, rotation as well. Thailand is moving into the modern yeah. modern era because Definitely. we see that tira, uh, number three, Tiratong Bumatan, you know, yeah. is he started started as left back, but then he stuck in inside yeah. uh, as a as a midfielder. Yeah, like Zinchenko as type. Zinchenko right? type, yeah. So yeah. I'm like, wow, even Thailand is is moving into mm-hmm. modern football. Mm-hmm. But credit credit to Kim Pangon, you know, like he said that he wanted to play. I see that he he started to play uh, play out from the back, and then uh, there were a few times that like. He said, nah, we can't do this. We need to bring back our cross. <laughs> Context is key as well. Yep. Context is key. You want to play out from the back, but again, yep. depending on, on the other team. Like the against opening, Singapore, yeah. we were just sending it into, into that golden way. zone. Can mm-hmm. we just boom, boom okay. early on? You know, we, we managed to score a couple and, and we, we scored, could settle yeah. in. It worked. It worked yep. for us. Sometimes you've got to win ugly. But right? the football a win is, is a win. A win is a win. Yeah. Bro. you got to shit house your way through sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see yourself in... In the next five years, in terms of scouting, um, are you looking at maybe building your own thing over here? Mm. You know, because I'm sure there are a lot of, even though, like you said, um, it is still quite niche. Mm-hmm. But there are people out there mm-hmm. who are really passionate about about the the industry and and the development of our football. Um, yeah, I have a lot of ideas coming up. You know, like uh, I, how I see myself in the next five years is that obviously I, I want to set up. Uh, a, a scouting thing in in Malaysia and see see how that goes and but ultimately uh, what I want to be is bec- is to become a director of football you know because there's so many stories that you, you they people started as scouts but then they became a director of football so that's my long term goal uh, director mm-hmm. of football and um, in terms of uh, scouting is basically help I, I I just want to help Malaysia you know like. I want to help Malaysians as well understand that if you that there's no harm in you if you're not becoming a footballer. There's always other pathways, you know, yeah. like you can become a private coach like yourself, uh, a, a scout. There's so many things, oh, so, so many, many things, so many roles in your role. But you can still get involved in the industry. But there's um, it's not just a footballer. You you can be like myself, a scout. Uh, yes. Just helping Malaysians to understand mm-hmm. that yeah, there's more life yep. in football. More life, bro. <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you looking to do more in the local scene? I, I think I'm planning to start more uh, for this season. I think that's all, bro. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting you got to help out season. these kids who, are, yep. who really just need the opportunity. That's all. But they just don't know where to look for it, right? Yep. Like one, one question that I get, had a lot on my Instagram was, uh, like, na, na bila teams are the trial and stuff. Uh-huh. And a lot of the things are closed and stuff, so... Now, having scouts who are able to identify these players mm-hmm. will help them just you know act as like a bridge yep. for them. That that's that's why we need like scouts from all over Malaysia. You know, like um, for them to be interact in, interactive with the players that uh, were, are looking for trials, and it, it's a, it's going to be a tough job if if I'm the one uh, if I'm the only one that that's going to be a, a, oh, a FM, bridge. FM did a fantastic job now with the course. Yeah, yeah, they did. They're, they're doing more, a, more coming through now. Yep, and I'm grateful for that. Like, yes, finally, new new yeah. scouting friends in yeah. Malaysia yeah. because sometimes my eyes is not good. We need to have a lot of uh, yeah. other eyes. Like yeah. uh, sometimes, if I see that from my team, like uh, for example, we did a report on a player. Like okay, I say this guy is good, and I missed out on his um, on his uh, negative attributes, and then another scout saw that negative attribute. So mm. then we compiled yeah. this the yeah. scouting report together. Yeah. So it's better, you know, just yeah. to have another extra yeah. pair of eyes. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. You know, you, you we see things differently. Yep. Right. So mm-hmm. I'm 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 sure having a team with you will help you create more of a complete player profile. You know, some things that you might have missed. Mm-hmm. You told me that you do a bit of scouting in the Super League. Uh huh. What are your thoughts on, on the Super League starting soon in about two weeks? To be honest, I'm very excited, you know, because um, f- I think for the first time we have very competitive coaches. We have a, a good amount of competitive coaches. A bit of storyline behind them as well. Yeah, a bit of storyline behind them. And um, I think I want to see what Lim Tiong Kim is doing. And uh, I would just like I'm to say well. uh, Lim Tiong Kim helped me a lot as well uh, to, to be a scout now. Oh, really? Um, yeah. You uh, him? I I contacted him lah regarding oh, regarding scouting and and he told me uh, what should I see in a player and yeah credit to him and I'm very happy I was very happy when I heard that yeah. he he got into Para and and uh, Imran uh, one of our friends uh, got to work with him so I was really happy and yeah to see Nafuzi as well Kedah 
Selangor looking good uh, Sabah as well They're so it's, oh, it's so a very many, competitive yeah. uh, league seems this a bit season. more balanced now yeah 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 right so I'm very excited to see because all coaches have different game plans uh, moving forward because the new coaches right now we see that they have their own tactical approach it's, it's different from mm. the ones that we see like okay same DNA same DNA yeah. Uh, so yeah it's very exciting to see what do you think about the, the new structure this year as well with the Super League down to 23 and then Preston and Belia being moved down here I'm still I'm still pretty bummed about the fact that we don't have a, a division 2 why? Because I think that that's the beauty of football, footballing pyramid. You know, like after uh, there's no relegation, so yeah. that 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 means like people, if they, if they finish bottom, they'll be like, "Tapa, there's no drive. I'm still here. No relegation. I'm still here." Yeah, there's like no the MLS. Yeah, right? like the MLS. Yeah. Um, if we still have a division two, I st- it still provide competition. Like there's always a saying. We love an underdog story, like yeah. uh, a newly promoted side, yeah. and then uh, managing to compete, managing to yeah. stay up. We, yeah. we we love those stories, so I just think that we 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 could have been better if we had a, a division two side as well. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's it's good that we added uh, an under twenty three yeah. side, yeah. which is uh, because we were screaming for the development, mm-hmm. and I really love what Selangor is doing for the under twenty three squad, and. Um, Yes, they are taking players from AMD, but I think that their the average squad age is, is, is young. very young. young. And it, was it Ballistic Alsa they won? Yeah. Yeah, 4-2, four, four four two, two, I think. Four two. Yeah, and I really like the player, yeah. Haikal Danish. Mm. Um, even, I, even I think, if I'm not wrong, I got one friend, uh, Brandon, playing, playing in the team. I see. Yeah. Um, I think even the coach, the coach is from uh, Abdi, also is from AMD. I see. If I'm not wrong. So that AMD cult, DNA. Yeah, is, is AMD, AMD for, culture. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, Haikal Danish is what is is one of those Class. big things, yeah. yeah. One of those big Malaysian players that you will, you will see and he will go back. Trust me. <laughs> so yeah, again, that's why we have those uh, under twenty three leagues where I believe that it's good for player development, and it would just be ba- it would just be the cherry on top if we had uh, a, a division two yeah. for Malaysian Premier League. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With that being said, though, mm-hmm. the under twenty three. President and Belia, mm-hmm. every year they play in a group mm-hmm. format, and this is the problem that I see with it. Mm-hmm. It limits the amount of game time yep. that you have in a year. Yes. Last year, they had a break because of Wasser uh-huh, one month, uh-huh. and then they played two games, and then afterwards they went into another month break. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know why. Yes. Okay, but the flow and the momentum, Larry. Betul, I agree. Yep. Number one, do you have any idea of what was the breaks for? Number two, what, wh- oh, maybe the question is why do they play in a group format instead of one whole league table where these players get to play, you know, at yeah, least 15 yeah. games a season, you know? Because I think last year um, I interned with Kel Belia for a bit. Mm-hmm. I think they played 10, maybe? Or oh, if I'm not wrong, okay, maybe a bit more, but mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. it wasn't much, bro. It really yeah, wasn't yeah, much. Yeah, I agree. Not enough. Like, like I said lah bro Like uh, Malaysian punya Footballing culture Is like We're focusing on Carnivals you know Like The group stage format yeah. When we're not Typically as um, Macam uh Focusing on the league format Because Game time In youth development Is so important It's, it's so it's important, so important. Yeah, I, mean, I tell my players all the time yeah. Like you can train with me But if you're not playing games There's no point Yes there's no point. I'd rather you play two, three games and train me once mm-hmm. than train me four times and then play one game. Yep. The games is where you're going to improve. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, thank you lah for you to highlight that a lot because um, I, I'm not really sure how it is with the management side of things and I just hope uh, that they see this as we, we, we want to create more pl- talented players and how we can uh, create more is that Ensuring that we can see the p- growth progress of them, and by doing that, we need league a league format. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, there is a change. There is a change in the in the in the format because if we're all doing all these big changes from the top, but we're overshadowing, we're not looking at the yeah. at the small at the smaller scale mm-hmm. uh, smaller scale tournaments. I think it will just be the same. And then I'll I'll just come on this podcast again and, <laughs> and, and we'll repeat, this, repeat the same thing again in yeah. the next two years. Yeah.
So hopefully that there's going to be a sudden change because we are moving, we are moving in a direction, uh, our country, our footballing nation. So hopefully lah, yeah. hopefully. But I guess just as any problem in life, we always got to start the root cause. But the root cause is always going to be at the grassroots development. Yes. Right? Super League clubs having a full setup under it, up to the senior teams, yes. right? Long term vision for each mm-hmm, of the clubs. Mm-hmm. Investors can then see, okay, mm-hmm. this is a a project which I'm willing to put money into. Yeah. Then comes into the culture, you know, fans see it as something which I want to go and support my club. Yes. Parents see it as, wow, this is the pathway for my child to mm. actually mm-hmm. have a, you know, a fulfilling and a successful career. Yep. And then as a whole, now as a country, we all sort of bangkit sama lah. Yes. Better, right? Yes. In a perfect world. Betul. And hopefully soon. Hopefully, hopefully, soon. hopefully bro. Hopefully soon, but. We have to start, right? They have to start. Just have to start. And I think we are both doing a part in the in the community because we are seeing this and we are tackling this at a very young age. Yeah. And um, just doing as much as we can. Yeah, right? I think. That thing. And when when people start to see the the fruits of our labor, yeah, only then uh, yeah. they will say like, okay, mm-hmm. this is the way to go. Yeah. I mean, spot on, man. Like mm-hmm. me as a young coach, especially. The general stereotype of a coach is that like your experience, you know, you 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 played, you yep. know, the highest level I played is believable, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess there's a sort of stigma around it, like, yep. oh, who am I to coach? Yeah, and I understand it, right? But number one, so the best way for me to learn how to coach is to coach yourself. And number two, as well, sometimes people, I've heard people say, oh, who is he to coach yeah, pro yeah, players? Yeah, yeah. But the the thing is with pro players is that it's not really coaching. Mm-hmm. For me, it's how can I simulate game environments in which they maybe encounter mm-hmm. in a game yeah, once yeah. or twice but with me they can do reps after reps mm-hmm. after reps you know they yeah, know how to so kick the ball better than me yep. they know how to cross the ball better than me I'm not teaching them that mm-hmm. I'm just providing them that structured game session yes. where they only have an hour in a week to do the extras mm-hmm. how can they make the most out of mm-hmm. it and that the exercise selection it's, it's a skill in itself yep. right so there's just so much to it man I think it's because I agree with that like the the general stigma that we get is because we are relatively young and it's funny because it's the young ones that are doing the the work doing the work and you're just the one that's um, yeah. behind the keyboard yes. uh, yeah. saying saying on all the TikTok stuff. comments yeah on the TikTok comments <laughs> with like. a profile picture of Ronaldo yeah so many things <laughs> I swear to god like <laughs> when I got into this industry bro like um I I never le- I I never cared about the backlash, but then you know once in a while it gets you. It, 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 gets, you. it gets it gets you're you. You're human. You're right? only human, bro. Yeah, th- those are the things that that makes me feel like, yeah, bro. I should be going out spending time with my friends. Yeah, but I'm doing this f- for you. You know, yeah, you, your, pro- your your spot. son yeah. is going to be a player one <laughs> yeah, day. And I'm then helping you out. I'm helping you out. <laughs> yeah. and yeah, Malaysians, uh, it's it's very tough mm. to get that inside their heads. You know. Yeah. We'll finish off with this. Um, to anyone watching this, mm-hmm. looking to do what you do, mm-hmm. looking to, to scout as well, what advice or what things do you have to say to any of them? Okay, first of all, I would just like to say, um, you guys can drop into my uh, Instagram comment, uh, Instagram DMs, DMs anytime, the and DMs. I'll be more than happy to help. Uh, but th- there, there's been a few, you know, like ask, asking me like, what, what can they do and. I'm I'm just more than happy to help and the first thing that we need to remember as a scout is that what are we going to do it for like um, remember your your soul values because there's there's so many uh, recent reports that scouts turn to become agents you know because it's lucrative business you know agents and I've been offered many times to become an agent and I just said no I, I want to do scouting so remember your your values of being a scout and um, most importantly is uh, never scout with bias with a bias yeah never scout with a bias like for me for example if you were playing Rani yeah I'll, I'll be cool talking to yeah. you with like this but then in the reports I will be throwing really? shit at you bro yeah. I swear lazy <laughs> never <Yeah>. recover <laughs> back <laughs> all those things yeah. always swearing on the pitch <laughs> <laughs> we need to be realistic yeah like even though if you're if you're a friend of mine uh, doing reports is I feel like it's, it's an uh, we say it's an amanah you know mm. like well, we, we've been given the ability to do that so yeah. do it with honesty lah. Mm-hmm. and trust me 
being a scout is not uh, people will think like if you if you be a scout for a Premier League side or or a, a, a professional club, you get paid a lot. Nah, it's, it's it's not it's not a it's not a good paid job, lah. I would say. Mm-hmm. So you do it out of love and passion for mm-hmm. the game, mm-hmm. and yeah, the the money will come later, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Inshallah. Lah. <laughs> Inshallah. Um, and then the last one is for the players. Mm-hmm. Um, I know you're very tactical heavy. What advice do you have for players, um, especially as they develop now? Because from what I see, mm-hmm. technically, um, quite sound. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But again, like you said, the off ball movement at that, yeah. that tactical side. What should a player be investing their time into? In in terms of their development, what can what things can they do by themselves? Do you think, as a scout, scout's perspective, um, to take their game to a, to another level? To say so, I've always said this many times uh, towards my, towards the clubs that I'm working for, um, is that Malaysian players we are technically better than most of the of the uh, talents that play abroad. Seriously, uh, but we like tactically. So how we can improve tactically is just by reading and watching a lot of tactically. You know videos that that is available on YouTube. Yeah. You know, like uh, Are you keen football. To make that sort of content. Me, um, I don't know. If if, if I'm free, I can. Yeah, we can talk about it after. <laughs> 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 But um, yeah, they need to improve tactically because if you have the tactical understanding, then you will go far. I think that's why uh, Lukman and Hadi is going far because they play in, in a setup where they had tactical, you know, being implemented mm. on them. It's not just. Route one yeah. individual brilliance. Mm. No, it's not that. Yeah, study the game. Study the game. Yeah, yep. study the game. And basically, if you if you have off the ball movement and you understand the positioning of where you should be, yeah. then you would go yeah. far. You would go far. Yeah. Trust me. On YouTube, there's one legend called Mitso Junior. You know, not Mitso Junior. Yeah, Mitso Junior. What do you think of him? He's good. Is decent lah. Decent. decent. It's a good start for someone it's, to it's a good to start yeah. to understand mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, where to move and stuff, right? That there's so many things uh, that right now I see that technical a uh, technical analysis is is becoming a norm in Malaysia. There's a few good YouTube channels that you should go and um, yeah. Again, I'll send the links to Rani that you guys can follow. Uh, can non football players, football players, uh, semi pro or pro. Yeah, you can just have. It's good to 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 feed your mind, you know, with with, with those things. Mm-hmm. Adam, plug anything where they can reach you out to LinkedIn, Instagram. Yeah, uh, my socials are all Adam Sariman. So just search Adam Sariman on on any uh, social media platform, and you can find me. Okay, perfect, bro. Thanks so much. Now, nah, man, thanks for inviting, thanks, bro. Thanks, so, wraps.